Bro, I was just trying to learn how to play chess, dude. My 10 year old's beating the shit in chess. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's ridiculous. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to the Punk Rock Review Podcast. I have another special guest in the house today. We got Chris Cesarini. Is that right, Cesarini? Yes, it is. From uh, guitar player for Conservative Military Image, and you do vocals in Street Power, correct? Yes, sir. Bro, I just heard your record the other day for the first time. That's actually what got me to finally go, all right, I'm going to bother this man, see if he's got some time. <laughs> it's because I was like, dude, you got two bands that I like? That's pretty crazy, man. A lot of people do uh, one great band, but to do two great bands is quite the feat, man. So what's up, man? How are you today? I'm good, man. How are you? Actually just came from Street Power Practice. Oh, nice. I was gonna, <laughs> I was going to ask if which band you were practicing with, but I guess uh, y- y'all are in Boston, correct? Street, uh, street power. So yeah, I live like an hour south of Boston now. Okay, okay, okay. So that band is based out of Boston. And for anybody that's wondering what they sound like, in my personal opinion, it is like, uh, like Terror and Folsom, maybe a little heavier, even a little bit. Uh, really good, man. If you like just hardcore and not anything that's like you know deathcore or something like that. Good, uh, really, really good, straight up hardcore with like some blue collar lyrics. I need to dive a little deeper and do an album review. But what I what I've listened to thus far has been the whole record. But uh, I've only done it like maybe twice, so I got a little bit more, a little, little more digging to do. But it's very good. So hell yeah, man, dude. What's it been like dealing with the stuff with CMI over the last year? The band's kind of blowing the fuck up, man. Dude, it's it's been incredible. It's like every show, you're like, oh, this is the best show that we've ever played <laughs> and then you play the next one and you're like well that was the best show we've ever played it's uh man it's just it's just fun like it's so much fun uh the band like that we're all having such a good time with it and it's you know we're not pushing it to be something it's not it's just you know and everybody in the band like we all get along great so dude that's so important that's yeah. just so important um uh, yeah, I was talking, okay, so I, I don't know how to bring this up without it, just bringing it up. So people always constantly ask me about the name of the band because okay. instead of just listening to the music and reading the lyrics or whatever, they have to go ask somebody else because they're too afraid to go do it themselves, I guess. Yeah. Um, I was, I guess, fortunate might be the right word, but I, I listened to it before I knew the name of the band. It just kind of came on a YouTube video or something. Like, I think... Uh, this channel fellow punk uploaded something and it just came on and I was like, dude, what is this? And I, I liked his vocals a lot. And I was like, what is going on here? This, the lyrics are great. And then I found out the name and I was like, somebody told me it was CMI and I never even thought about, <laughs> Oh, that could stand for something. That's and our sellout found- name. <laughs> <laughs> hey bro. I'll, I go to quickness, dude. I ain't even tripping, bro. Where's the check? Uh, yeah. So, but I was, so when I found the name, I was, I was like, Oh, that's interesting. So when I asked Adam about it and he told me where it came from, do you, do you guys get a lot of, uh, I don't know what the word is like uh pushback because of the name or are people oh, generally yeah. pretty accepting of it once they get to know you so like there's people who don't understand it at all they just see that one word at the beginning of the band name and they they lose it right they don't even yeah. all rationale goes out the window and they're just like assume that what we're about and th- which is crazy but the name is abrasive obviously on i mean kind of on purpose i guess right you would say That's... like yeah i mean yeah, like it, it's just like, uh, dude. Adam says this stuff, and like, okay, I've seen y'all play once because you come down to Houston, but I've watched a few of the videos just to kind of get like, I don't know, just to see what's going on. Plus, I can't go fly around the country all the time, so it's cool to see y'all shows growing. I really think it's awesome. So, I've heard him say it many times, dude. If you don't care to ask, we don't care. Like, if you don't, if you don't want to, you know, peel back the first layer of the onion, then you don't. Whatever, man. You don't. We don't need yeah. you. And I love that. That's the thing too is like a lot of people will message the band page or talk all kinds of crazy stuff on Reddit or whatever. Like, oh, they're playing here. Like, people people are gonna show up and this is gonna happen. Not one single time has anything ever happened, and every show has been a good time. So it's it the people who say these things. I don't. 
they don't exist in our world. They're just right. internet people. You know what internet I mean? Internet trolls. Yeah. Oh, dude, That's they're it. everywhere. They do it to me, and all I do is like interview people and review albums. It's weird, man. Uh, but but I I stand up and 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 I represent y'all's band. Like I promote y'all stuff because I like it. It doesn't have nothing to do with the name to me. I don't give a shit what the name is. The name could be like the Barbie Three, and I wouldn't care. I'd be like, here, this is cool, man. Like, I mean, we listen to bands all kinds of weird ass names, dude. Like, there's nothing. I don't think that's any more weird than Rancid. Like, I don't know. It's such a strange phenomenon, man. That. It- and that, when you un- and when you finally learn what it is, you're like, oh, that is not what I thought it meant at all, right, dude? When I when he told me, I was like, oh, I kind of thought it was gonna be something a little more spectacular than that. I kind of like that it's something so simple, yep. and because uh, somebody today, like today, two hours ago, commented on one of the videos and was like, so the name is pretty confusing. These guys right leaning or what? And I was like, no. Like not even a little. Here's a link to the whole thing. He talks about it. Just go watch the video. And I was like, stop, stop being so like sensitive. First off, but stop making assumptions. Like stop assuming things. Like I don't. It's just kind of like having a tattoo on your neck, and some guy goes, "Oh, prison guy." No, dude, I've never been to prison. Like I just like tattoos. Like <laughs> well, that's the thing too. Is like people will say that, and then they don't understand. Like they haven't even taken two minutes to go listen to a single one of our songs. Not one. <laughs> because if they did, like. <laughs> You can't name a CMI song where anything in it is politically cited at all. At all. Not at even all. dude. I've I've actually looked to you know, okay, look, I have a responsibility as somebody that has a you know growing platform to not stick my foot directly in my mouth, right? So I, yeah. I, I do look, I do pay attention. And it's because, you know, I mean there's there's bands, shoot, there's bands that have like a a, a, a strict left-leaning policy do some wild shit in the past couple of years that I, I don't even cover them. I don't talk about them. I don't have their stuff in my store. I don't carry their records anymore. Like, so yeah, I'm pretty careful. I feel like these people, they, 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 and it's people that have been on the channel and I'm like, yo, not like on oh, there. Here's like a, like a guest, but people I recognize them. I'm like, you watch my channel. Do you think I would do that? It's so strange, man. So strange, yeah. but it's all right. I just was curious of how, how that kind of, that's gotta be a pain in the ass sometimes, but it's also, I kind of enjoy wearing t-shirts that piss people off. Like the casual violent shirt. Like I wear that shirt knowing it's going to get weird looks. And it's got to be one of those things. I mean, we are antagonistic type by nature, I think, a little bit, sort of. But, uh, dude, so what, how long, what, how long has Street Power been around? Which which band came around first? uh, I believe they were pretty like neck and neck. Okay. Uh, Well, Street, Street Power isn't playing shows longer, so. Uh, the first Street Power show was March of 2022. So they're both pretty new bands then. Yeah. That's cool, and, uh, though. Shit. And the, fir- and the first CMI show was December 9th. Nice. Of 2022. Nice. So, okay. So how'd you end up playing with CMI since you were already doing vocals in a band? And you said they started. I guess if they started at the same time, you probably just started two bands, huh? Because you're doing vocal but- duties in one. You don't, you don't play guitar in that band in Street Power? No, I just sing. Okay. And I, I like to keep it that way because uh, yeah. our, guitar, our guitarist is incredible at writing. So I like, I don't want to intervene in my thing is let me do the lyrics. Let me like create the brand around it. You guys yeah. write the, write the music. And if I don't like something, I'll let you know. But um, yeah, but most of the time the, everything's pretty solid that comes through that band. The um, well, with CMI, I was, I heard it one day. Cause I, I had friends sharing it and the, you know, the band at the time was I just really Adam writing yeah. stuff. And I, I like you, I heard it and I was like, what is this? I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> and then I saw the name and I was like, yes. Awesome. <laughs> so I, I, I loved it. And then uh, two of my friends were in the band. So I was like, you nice. guys are a four piece. Like, let me know if you need a guitar player. Hell and yeah. Then got to chatting with Adam and, and then all of a sudden, I was playing guitar for CMI. Um, That's pretty I've been, the, I've been in the band since, you know, I've played every single show that we've played, um, including the first one, except for they did like a surprise set at Tied Down uh, in Detroit. But I, okay. I wasn't I wasn't at the fest, so they did a four okay. piece on that one. That's pretty rad, man. That, that, that's 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 cool. I. Uh... Yeah, I really enjoy both the bands. and They're very different. I, I like that you're in two bands. 
that sound different enough to where if you listen to them both in the same day, you're not going to get like sick of one of the one of the sounds. Like I don't know about you, but I listen to a fairly wide variety of like punk and hardcore music. But same, if I yeah. listen to the same thing all day, I'm going to get burnt out on it. And so I'll skip from like Alkaline Trio to like The Unseen. I'll listen to some Wisdom and Chains and then I'll go do like a Bouncing Souls album or something. So uh, your bands are very different and I like it, man. So you write all the lyrics in Street Power. Uh, most of them, yeah. Sometimes yeah. my guitarist will chip in, you know, like. Cool, you're, cool. So, the room that I'm in is like my home recording studio. So like oh, we'll ass. hang out, we'll hang out in here and record stuff. And if I'm like, a lot of the times, like we'll record the song and then I'll write, I'll have some lyrics, but I'll write as we go. That's and how I used he, to do it. Yeah. And if he's like, usually, you know, like, Oh yeah, try this out. So cool. hell yeah, man. Uh, listening to you guys uh, and talking to you guys, all y'all, man, any, anybody from any, it just gets me so wanting to do, the band thing, but I live out in the sticks, man. I got three kids, bro. I ain't got time for that stuff right now, I, man. I, I got three kids also. <laughs> I was I knew you had at least one because I saw a photo of her and I was like, Oh, that's cool, man. It was her birthday recently, I believe. I think. Uh yeah, that's awesome. Day. Um, that's awesome. I got I got uh 10, 9, and three year old. And uh if I didn't have I have a record store and then I do this, and then I got a small label too. And so like if I didn't have all that stuff going on, I think I probably would try to do it, but I really like being like behind the scenes a little bit more i feel like yeah. it's just better suited for me i'm kind of chatty and like to talk and stuff so this stuff works pretty well um i had i had no self-control when i was younger and I, I i basically ruined a really good band that i was in so i like <laughs> uh you know learn my lesson uh i was talking to somebody about <coughs> recently and they were asking me like so what do you what do you describe this music as because i was letting them hear it Dude, i was at my job at a i was at a <laughs> i work at alamo draft house do you know what that is uh no i i've i've been to texas quite a few times uh only houston uh twice so alamo draft house is actually i believe we're nationwide at this point but it's a it's a theater and it's inside of the it's like a, it's like a, a a film dorks theater man we show like okay. old horror movies all the time but inside of it there's an actual bar like you it's like a separate you don't sit there and then like watch the movie you sit there and then if you want to go to a movie you go to a movie so I'm I'm the bartender, right? So yeah, I was like playing y'all's music like on my phone at the bar one night. And this guy was like, yo, what is that? And I was talking to him. Turns out he listened to old punk and hardcore bands. And I thought that was cool. Uh, and he asked me like, what do you would describe this as? And I, I told him, I feel like y'all are kind of taking the, the place. I don't know the place of is the right words, but like kind of continuing on the blood for blood thing. I see you got the blood for blood banner on your wall. It feels oh, yeah. like the same it's the same feeling I got. Does that make sense? It's the same feeling I got when I heard Blood for Blood when I heard you guys play. And I was like, shit, we need this right now, man. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you've heard that before, but it's really what I felt, man. I felt like it's the I've, same. I've, I've never heard it get compared to Blood for Blood, but that's awesome because I totally agree with you. Like the first time I heard Blood for Blood, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's the that's how I felt when I heard the first, I think, I think the first thing I ever heard was Yard Hard. Somewhere that's I think that was a single or something oh, so that you, I just Yeah, so you got into it late. Yes. So I've had to go back, bro. Check this out. I just got I'm a I'm a giant dork with collecting stuff. And I just picked this up. It took me forever to find one. I don't even have that. You don't even have this? No. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I should send it to you, man. No, um, you don't have to do that. I'll find one eventually. Bro, yeah, I just I, I like it's it's rare that I find a band that I immediately give a shit about that much. Like it's pretty rare. I like Rancid's my favorite band. Outside of like them, maybe Gaslight Anthem, Bouncing Souls, and Alkaline Trio. Like that's about that's my little I'll I will spend money and go places to see them play. And then you guys came around and I was like, oh shit, it's been a while. Another band that I can care this much about. I just think it's so refreshing. It's such a weird word to use for y'all's music, but it is, man. <laughs> So yeah, I, I I wouldn't like pigeonhole it into one specific genre or subgenre. It really, I feel like, kind of taps on a lot of the spectrum across punk and hardcore and oi. Like it, mm -hmm. like yeah, if you're gonna generalize it, like it's 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 hardcore punk and oi all in one band. It really is. No, it really is. That's accurate. It's 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 really hard to describe it. It's super simple. 
like the music's kind of simple, but you're like trying to describe it is kind of tough, man. It's got elements of ACDC and it's got elements of Blood for Blood. It's got, you know, yeah. uh, Sheer Terror, Warzone. Like it's got all kinds of shit in there that I'm just like, yes, bro. I like the uh, guitar tone that y'all are using in that band. Uh, it's got like a buzzy sound that I that I really resonate with, man. I, I, I enjoy it a lot. The uh, let's talk about Street Power a little bit, man, because I do want to shine some light on that band because I, I like it a lot. I just I just saw that you had some vinyl for sale, so I picked up a couple copies of that. And uh, oh, thank you, man. Hell yeah, dude! Like I ha I do have a record store down here. I, I if I if I get a chance to grab extras of stuff and just kind of it ain't necessarily about a margin. It's about just getting this stuff in my shop. And uh, I do like you know all kinds of shit in there, anyways. But like yeah, dude, it is it's it's uh. I mean, why wouldn't I want it, right? It's a great, great album. So what are your goals with that band? You said you were just at practice. Are you all trying to tour like uh, CMI is doing? Are you trying to go, get out of the country? What are, you, what are you trying to do with the Street Power? We've had a couple offers for Europe, but one of them was like, they wanted us to headline our own tour there. And the, like Street Power is like not at that level to go headline a European tour, you know? Like, yeah. It's not something that I can't go there to lose money because I do this full time. This is my okay. full time gig now. Is like okay, being a musician. I record bands, but um, and I and I'm a firearms instructor, but 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 all for Dude, myself. Nice. Yeah, so all of that. Uh, really, like if I would have just depend on that stuff, it wouldn't work. But with being able to go, you know, with CMI and and like play shows and like you know the guarantees and stuff, we're not like getting rich right. by any means. Um, but I was like, you know what, uh, I'm going to do this full time. Like I've had career jobs. I've had jobs making six figures and I'm just like, I, it, it's miserable. This is what I've always wanted to do. So, man, I'm really happy for you. Like, I, I know we just met, but that's badass because I mean, I'm almost there, dude. I do YouTube. I got my little shop and I got my little label. I bartend a couple nights a week, but I pretty much get to do. Like what I want when I want to do it, my wife gets asked sometimes, "What's your husband do?" She's like, "I don't know, whatever he wants to do." And <laughs> I'm really proud of that. It's taking me a long time to get here. I'm 41 years old, man. Yeah, man, so, that's that's awesome. Like, yeah, it, I always tell people, like, you can have you can have all the money. You know, I was never I was never rich, but I was I was making good money. I did construction for a long time, and uh, I bought you know I. Bought my motor, brand new Harley. I got two cars. We got I got a beautiful house, um, and then I'm just like, I'm still not satisfied. Like I don't, right. the money's not doing it. I come, I work 11, 12, 13 hours a day, dude, and I work with people who are absolutely miserable, hate their families. Like that's just not me. So yeah. <clears throat> so I was just, I said, you know what, I'm gonna quit, and I'm just gonna do this. Dude, and <laughs> amazing. Good for you, man. It's soul crushing to go to these jobs that you hate. Like my wife isn't built for what I do. She likes to go to her job. She enjoys what she does. You know, and if she didn't, I'd tell her to quit and go find something else, man. She supports me. I'm going to tell her to do the same. Yeah. But some people are built for it. Some people aren't. And uh, especially a construction job. That's that's hard work. Um, oh, yeah. I worked in a rock crushing quarry for like five, five years. And then I went to a site work company doing like excavation ooh. in Boston. Good grief, man. You know, the hardest yeah. physical job I've ever done was uh, I used to lay, I don't know if it was telephone cable or what it was, but we used to bury cable. And have you ever done that? Oh, yeah. Fiber optic lines, stuff like that. Yeah. And you have that like piece of giant piece of metal. It's flat. And you have that handle and you slam it in the ground, open it up. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, we used all heavy equipment. So oh, my goodness, bro. No, dude, this is like a small company, dude. They had a bunch of us out there just working like slaves, bro. And I had this piece of sheet metal and a, like a piece of rebar welded to it with a, another piece of metal welded to the top. And it weighed like probably 30 pounds. And we it was only like four feet tall. And you'd have to pull it up over your head and slam it into the ground and open it up. It's only about a foot wide. And they'd want us doing like 1,500 feet of this stuff in a day. Oh and, uh, bro, I was jacked. <coughs> I had... I had blisters on my hands for months and months and months, but uh, I, bro, <laughs> I'd rather go sit in the office and do that, man. I guess I'm too soft, but uh, we did it on clay a couple times in Austin. Man, that was the most miserable thing I've ever done. So I have a lot of respect for people that do kind of that kind of work, man. That's that's tough, dude. Even with big machines, man, it's it's hot outside. It's oh it's yeah. Tough, man. So 
What's it like? Okay, first off, what have these shows been like with CMI, dude? Like, like I've seen video. That doesn't compare to the live experience. Oh, uh, the video, the videos give you like a quick glimpse of the show. And you're like, wow, that looks pretty crazy. Why if? But it never does it justice. Like the like this past one that we just did in Chicago was insane. Like we played Chicago quite a few times. Okay, and it it it's never really popped off like other places have. So we like went into this being like, oh, like hopefully this one will be cool, you know. Like yeah. we're playing with our friends in Pain of Truth and Vomit Forth and Dude, Break Pain the of Cycle. Truth is really Pain of Truth is really good too. Sorry, to be interrupt. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome. And uh, it was a new venue that we haven't played in, not new to Chicago, but new to us to play. And uh, yeah, it, the place was packed. It was it was awesome. The Hell show was yeah! Great. It was one of my favorite shows I think we've ever played. Dude, that's, I think I saw like a post where y'all were talking about how it went off. That's awesome, man. Hometown shows absolutely should be. Like some of the better ones, man. Like you should be able to count on your local people to come out and, and show up and show up for you guys. That's awesome, dude. I just get yeah. I get so stuck talking to y'all, man. This shit is make, it makes me happy, bro. Uh, I was gonna ask you what you did outside of the band, but you said you do that full time. That's amazing, dude. Is it is it kind of uh, is it like a little daunting to kind of commit to that? I guess it kind of well, is, huh? Yeah, especially with a I got a big mortgage. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I got a big big mortgage um i got three miles to feed but you know my my wife's a um nurse so like we we do all right and it was like okay if i quit my normal job this is what i have to bring home every week to make ends meet on my end right you know right so i also um if i'm not doing the firearms classes or if i don't have a band to record that week um i work with a friend of mine who owns his own landscaping company and he, he'll pay me you know so like nice okay so you got it kind of figured out yeah so if i if i need something to fall back on he'll he'll give me work anytime dude that's awesome man that's the life right there bro i think people get it all screwed up and they think that money is the one thing that you like need to be happy and it's like no bro you need it to survive unfortunately but not to be happy yeah you you gotta here's my thing is like all right i've already i bought all the cool stuff that i wanted i got the harley i got uh, reliable vehicles i got i got a house you know i i'm a firearms instructor so i got a lot of the guns that i always wanted i have all that stuff i'm like okay well still i've still got that urge all i want to do is music so that's amazing that's what, that's what i went to do i kind of i kind of have similar feelings when i'm like sitting around the house and i'm i'm not ever i'm not really bored very often because I, I stay busy as i'm sure you do uh I look around and I just get excited because I'm like, man, if I really wanted to go do something, I can just go in here and like print up some shirts or I can go and, you know, find a, a, a topic that somebody was asking me to cover on the channel. And I got, you know, notebooks over here full of notes and stuff people are asking yeah. me to cover. So I've constantly got something to do and the channel starting to grow in the in the way that I was hoping it would one of these days. So that's pretty neat, man. Uh, what do you like to do outside of play music? What 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 do you do for hobbies? I, I know you said you you teach firearm instruction, so I assume you like to do stuff related to firearms. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I'm not like hitting the range every day, you know. I, sure. I've got I've got kids, so like they do cheerleading, they do dance. Yeah. They, you know, they like skateboarding, they do all this stuff. Let's so go. We're always, yeah, yeah. So we're always doing something. Um, I like to cook, so I'm always. Oh, cooking. nice. Yeah. Dude, that's always awesome. Making, always making something. Um, really, just you know, if I'm not doing music or work or working or my, you know, it's just kind of like, yeah, do whatever. I live, I live yeah. like what, two minutes from the beach, so you know, when it's nice out, we go there. Hell yeah, dude! Yeah. That explains some of that mortgage, dude. Hell yeah, nice, nice dude. prime location. Uh, yeah. What's your go-to dish that you like to cook? My dad was a chef, and I'm, I'm like, pretty decent at cooking, but I wouldn't call myself, like, a chef or anything. But uh, what's your go-to oh, dish? What do you like to cook? That That's tough. I like to cook a lot of different stuff. I like trying new stuff all the time. Nice. Um, I would say, I don't know, some type of, like, maybe, like, some type of seafood pasta type dish. Okay. Or, I don't know. You ever you know, make your know. own? Do you ever make your own pasta? I've never made my own, no. Dude, it's so much work. Like I don't recommend I don't recommend it, bro. It's so much work. I uh, yeah. 
I have a couple of things that I make really well, but one that is always surprising to people is that I'm really, really good at making fried chicken. Like so much so that it's kind of ruined fried chicken for my wife. I don't do it often because it takes me all day. I spend oh, yeah, all day making it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's why I was curious. I was like, I wonder what he makes. Because if you cook, if you said, if you just said fried chicken, I'd have been like, shit, dude, you got well, more so time and energy than me. I, I'll do like homemade fried chicken sandwiches and stuff like that. I'll also do, I guess I, I make pe- like these homemade pizzas. They're called bar pizzas. It's like a special thing like that's, I guess, uh, from south of Boston. Like it's okay. It's from this area, the type of pizza that I make. Um, and then the other dish, I guess, that I like to make that I'm like really good at is I make like homemade ramen, like from scratch. I don't make the Ooh. noodles, but I make everything. No, but you else go buy the. Scratch. Oh, dude, that's dope. No, that dude, I like yeah. a homemade ramen, man. Uh, is is that the okay? My ignorance is gonna shine through here. Is that the same thing as pho, or is it different? I honestly don't know. You don't know? I think I think they're pretty close. I think they're very similar dishes, but uh, yeah, that's I think awesome, man. Slightly different. Maybe the broth is different. Do you, whenever y'all are out cruising around playing shows and stuff, do you get uh? The chance to to cook one hour gone, or you have to stuck eating like no. fast food and shit. No, yeah. we're we're hitting, we're hitting like White Castle and like yeah. whatever is open at two a.m. and usually it's disgusting. So right, dude. When I was young, like in my so I'm forty one <laughs> now, so when I was like in my early twenties, like let's say two thousand two till two thousand seven or so, I would always I was single, so I had lots of extra space in my place. I'd have bands stay over all the time, and. uh that was one of the things I liked to do was like when I knew somebody was going to be in town, I would talk to the my guy that promoted the shows. I'm like, hey, I got a spot. You think any of them need to stay here? And if he get in touch with somebody and stay, and I was for sure going to have them, I would try to cook food, man. Just whatever I could come up with, man. I did a lot of uh, I did a lot of tacos, but like real like fajita tacos and grilled chicken. Oh, yeah. Bread. Yeah. A lot of that because you can feed a bunch of people for a good price and it's usually pretty good food. But I've, uh, I've had I've had end it stay here a few times. I'm uh, pretty Hell good yeah. with those guys. So, dude, every every time they stay, I make a huge breakfast buffet. I think the last time they stayed, I made like a breakfast taco buffet or breakfast burrito buffet. Um, That's the way to do it. Yeah, you know, you just you can feed everybody with dude. a couple ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The one thing the bands always liked the best about staying at my house it had nothing to do with food or even like comfortable sleep. They were like, "You got a washer and dryer in your place." And I'm like, yeah, oh, bro, yeah load yeah. up your shit, man. I would stay up all night washing clothes for these dudes because, I mean, that has got to be the most shit-ass thing is to be cruising around for weeks at a time and not be able to do laundry, bro. That's got to yeah. be a pain in the ass, man. Uh, yeah, I, got, I got I got one in here, and uh, I got a stackable one in the bathroom in here, and then I got uh, two, you know, brand-new big ones, LG ones, in my regular house in the laundry room. Hell, yeah. Dude, that's awesome, so man. We can, we can do all the laundry here. Fuck yeah, dude. That's the way to do it. Man, I, as I get older, I look back on it like fondly with all the stuff I used to do, but it, it was so much of a hassle, man. I, I guess these days it's a little easier to do all the scheduling. And I was talking to Dwight earlier, and he said that uh, he, he mentioned that back when he started, they used like paper maps and such to travel. I, I oh, can't yeah. even imagine what that would be like. And I, and I almost did some of that, like a little bit, but it was like only in Texas, places I knew where I was going, kind of, you know? I can't imagine driving across the country and only using like a what was that? Map was it gold key or no no we use like gold key maps, bro. They're like a book that had oh, like yeah yeah yeah. You remember those things, dude? Yeah, like, I do. Oh my goodness, bro! I can't imagine touring. Dude, and it's like, funny that you say that because one time, so I was like sixteen, so this had to have been like two thousand five or two thousand six, and uh, my friend and his family they were like super poor, right? which every, we all were all of our families right were super poor but for christmas all he got was one of those gold key maps books because he was the only one of us that had a license at the time he was like a year older than us and i'll never forget dude i was dying he like i went over to his house in the morning because i lived down the street and, and like i said like we're all poor we came from shitty families so like christmas time we're like oh yeah all right go hang out with our friends hell yeah and he, i was like what'd you get he's like dude, I got a book. It's a, he's like, it's a map book. And in the look on his face, like, I, at least I, think I, got, I think I got a new skateboard deck. That's like the only thing I got. I was you like, know, oh, yeah. Hey dude, I'll take the skateboard deck over the gold key, bro. <laughs> that shit's funny, dude, man. One year around the holidays. So 
we were pretty poor, but but I had a great mom, dude. My dad was a fucking bum. You know, RIP to my pops, bro, but like, he was a bum, dude. And so he was never around, man. And I remember one holiday season, I don't know that it was like on Christmas, but it was around that time. I'm like sitting in my bedroom and I had to share a house with two families, right? We were just, you know, that's just how it was. And so I shared a bedroom with my sister and then my homeboy, who I still call my brother to to this day, his birthday was yesterday. Uh, he he uh, he was in the room next to me and I, I heard some banging on the window and I thought it was him. And so instead of like peeking, I just pulled up the blinds and I pulled it up and my buddy, David, who was some, you know, another white trash kid down the road. He's like, oh, what's up, bro? He's like, hey, come let me in, dude. And I was like, I can't just let you in my house, man. And he had blood dripping down the side of his face. And I was like, yo, what happened to your face? He's like, dude, come outside and I'll tell you. And I, so I go outside, sneak outside. I'm in, and I was in trouble. So I sneak outside and uh, he's got holes in his head. And he said that they were eating, I guess, whatever. might have been Christmas dinner. might have been Thanksgiving. I can't remember which. And his mom was just this royal bitch dude and she was a terrible cook i'd eaten at their house a couple of times she was bad <laughs> and uh he said that it was a holiday so he got pissed off and he was like man you gotta feed us this shit on a holiday and his dad was like excuse me and he was like this shit terrible and his dad took a bite of his food he was like tell your mother the food tastes good and he goes no this shit sucks and his dad just went Bop! and just got him with that fork and that's why he was bleeding, bro. Like, that's the kind of shit I used to see when I was a kid, bro. He stabbed him in the head with a fork. Right in the face, dude. I was like, oh, oh shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, man. The holidays when you're uh, not wealthy, that's, that's usually a, an event in itself, man. Uh, oh, yeah. What kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> What kind of stuff do you like to do, like, when you're driving around? Are you the type that likes to read books, listen to Audible, or just, like, plug in, listen to some music? Or are you the kind of like what do you up mean, in like the front seat I, talking if, shit? If, if we're like in the van, like yeah, driving, yeah, yeah. When you're show. traveling, like show to show, it, yeah. It it depends. Uh, like sometimes I'll have headphones in and and just be listening to music or a podcast or a book. Uh, a lot of the times, like there's pretty good banter in the van, so like we'll you know yeah, we'll just, we're just so. like talk talking shit and uh, or a lot of the times we're actually like sharing music with each other that like a nice. lot of us like hey this you haven't heard this oh check this out or like oh this band from here you know so like uh in europe we had a, a running playlist that i added everybody to so that they could add whatever they wanted so it's like hell yeah 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 so we just people were everybody in the van was just adding whatever they wanted to this playlist we had a rule it was like no hardcore because we're, we're playing these shows every night so you had to add right. some you know what i mean like Okay, you're gonna put on hardcore. It's something we've probably already all heard, right? So, but yeah, it was it was funny. It created a lot of good conversation, dude. I mean, I think a lot of folks look at us and think, oh, these guys like just one kind of music. But if you were to dig through my record collection, and I assume yours too, there's an eclectic mix of stuff over here, man. I got a very wide and very complicated palette when it comes to music, man. I my core is punk rock, but I like. I mean, I just started listening to jazz like about a year and a half ago. That shit's yeah. awesome, dude. Or at least some of it is. Some of it's weird, but some of it's great. Uh, what kind of stuff do you like outside of our typical punk, hardcore, oi stuff? Or what are you listening to outside of that? Um, a lot of the stuff I'll be listening to is like older stuff, like uh, older blues, like Howlin' mm. Wolf or Muddy Waters. Um, a lot of old country, like Hell David, yeah. Allen, David Allen Coe, uh, Waylon Jennings, Johnny Payne, oh, yeah. stuff like that. Um, a lot of fifties music too, like let's go Jerry Valley, like uh, the harp tones. Harp tones uh, are great. Yeah, like uh, my my musical palette's pretty wide, you know. And nice. I listen to, I also listen to like a ton of rap, but like the type of yeah, I like I like hip hop, but I love like hard gangster rap, like like yeah. the most ignorant ignorant shit you can. Like find. you like yeah, the yeah. drill shit. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, dude, look. I've always said that I don't really understand it. And I think it's kind of dangerous, but there's a part of me that also is kind of fascinated by it, bro. Like I really am like, like King Vaughn, that guy was like, I yeah. think he was kind of an evil person personally, but like his storytelling abilities are so bananas, dude. Like, and he wasn't even like really like a rapper, dude. He was like a gangster first and then just kind of rapped on the side till he got big. Right. That's that dude's the type of ability. that I like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. That's that guy was uh he was something. I mean, I, I was sad when I heard he was gone, man. I was like just a talented, talented person that just, just what a waste, man. I was sad, dude. 
I listen to a lot of Houston. Do you ever listen to any screw shit? I I have so like the Houston stuff. So I like um, Sauce Walker. Okay. I don't know if uh, he's from Houston. I, I I'm I'm like familiar with, not like super uh, super fan or anything, but I I know him a little bit. Uh, at least I think I know who you're talking about. I, I could be mistaken, but uh, I'm a little older with my Houston stuff. I like Paul Wall, UGK, Screw. Yeah, see, I, I never got into like Paul Wall and stuff like that. Like my older yeah. brothers, my older brothers are always into like rap and hip hop. Like my, the whole reason why I actually like got into hardcore and punk was because my older brother gave me a skateboard, and uh, I started skateboarding really young. And then I was like interested in watching skate videos. And like obviously, like you hear the soundtrack stuff like that, yeah. And and my dad always loved like classic rock stuff like that, so I was always interested in guitar. And when I started playing guitar, I was like, okay, I could play these classic rock songs. I was like, I want to learn something heavier. So then yeah. I was like, oh, Metallica was pretty heavy, but I was always like a big fan of the Misfits and like the Casualties, hell and, like, yeah, stuff like that. And then I started like around like sixth grade. I started seeing flyers on telephone poles for like local shows and stuff like that. Cool. So that's, I kind of like started looking that stuff up because the internet was brand new, but um, there were like message boards or like uh, there used to be a website called hxcmp3.com. Okay. And that was be- before MySpace, all that stuff. And you could look yeah, up. I don't uh, think lo- I know that one. Yeah. Local bands would upload all their music on there. That's dope. Yeah. It's, Dude, it I used to be. Anymore. I used to be on the Bridge Nine board heavy, bro. <laughs> like, oh, I bet. I think, yeah, dude. I, like, yeah, man. Uh, well, check this shit out. I don't know if you're. I'm sure you like this stuff here, but I found these. I was in Las Vegas a little while back, and I found a couple of dope ass tapes. I got DRI and Sick of It All. Oh yeah, yeah. Like original cassettes, bro. This is the kind of stuff that I get stoked to find, man. Uh, do you listen to anything on? Uh, do you, do you like physical media? Yeah, yeah. I got, I got. A whole record collection so like yeah. you were saying if you were to look through my vinyl i do have one section that's all hardcore punk and adjacent stuff and then i have another crate that's all motown blues and old nice. country and classic rock stuff dude i noticed that a lot of you boston boys man like especially all the blood for blood guys and all the dudes and the ducky boys they cover a lot of that 60s i don't know what to call it like soul like r&b doo-wop shit like they cover it like with punk rock songs and I, for one, love that shit, dude. It is yeah, so yeah. good, man. Uh, I think that that music needs to make a comeback, bro. Like more people need to like, I don't know, shine some light on it. I, m- I remember when I was a kid, they had oldie stations. They don't really have that anymore. Where like now, no. the oldie stations are like '90s music. Yeah, you. There was like in the morning. There was I think it, there was a station up here. It was like ninety-five point six in the morning. They would have like a block, and it was all '50s like doo up like dude style music so i would listen to it on the way to work sometimes it wouldn't be on and then but i haven't checked it in a long time so dude i, I we guess got, we got like spotify and the internet i was gonna so. say <laughs> spotify satellite radio there's got to be something like that that exists out there man uh what are some of your favorite bands and biggest influences that get you to really like in the mood to write music like what's a band or even a couple that you could put on and it just makes you want to write stuff uh for for street power, shit, dude, either or one, man. What, uh, yeah, just what, what 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 just what's your favorite shit? Like what could, what puts you in a good ass mood? Oh, it's tough, man. That's such a broad spectrum. Uh, yeah. Honestly, for I don't, I don't know. Like, it has to be relatable. Like for me to listen yeah. to the music and like really feel something, it has to be relatable. Uh, so it's like mood dependent. Yeah, that's like I can't get into metalcore stuff because they sing the stuff they sing about is like not relatable to me. It's like these dudes all come from like cul-de-sac neighborhoods, you know. I'm so glad you said that. I, I don't, I don't know how, I didn't know how else to explain it, but I feel the exact same way. Like they all come from like middle class, and there's nothing wrong with that. But like, I have a buddy that I do a podcast with, and like we overlap quite a bit. But you can tell that he likes more pop punk stuff, and I like more street punk stuff. And uh, I think that's exactly what it is, is that a lot of those bands come from stuff and situations and backgrounds that I can't really understand. Like, I, I like I like some pop punk stuff. Sure, uh, sure. Like, you know, it can be catchy, whatever. Like, uh, newer stuff, I'm not really into that much. Like, Koyo's pretty good, and no, I like No Pressure. 
Dude, um, I've been told about them like four times in the past two days, dude. I guess I got to check them out. Who? No pressure or coin? Yeah, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they're really good. Um, that dude who sings for that band was also in another huge pop punk band too before that. But this oh, one, yeah, this one sound. And I was never a huge Blink One Eighty Two fan, but this sounds like if Blink One Eighty Two came out now and in, instead of you know in the nineties. Okay. Okay. So. It's, Dude, it's really good. It's good. The the singing is not exactly like that, but the music, you're like, oh, okay, this does. If you ever listen to like older Blink 182, you'll be like, oh, this, this kind of sounds nice. similar. Okay. Yeah. Older Blink is where I would go if I'm going to listen to it. I don't even like their self titled stuff. I like I like Dude Ranch and, and like Enema of the State. Yeah, yeah. And I'm good. I don't need nothing else. Uh, I, I was recently doing a bunch of content covering pop punk stuff. And people keep referring to bands like No Use for a Name and No Effects and Bad Religion even as pop punk. And it blew my mind, man. I don't know how I feel about that. I thought that was a strange description of those bands. Yeah, I wouldn't consider that pop punk. I would just consider that like, I don't even know. It's like, it's like skate punk. Skate punk, yeah. Yeah. Dude, what kind of skateboarding did you used to do or did you enjoy doing? I was, I was, I skated a lot. I still have a skateboard. Oh, did I, you I like my. I think I got mine right here in the other room. Yeah, I still skate a little bit. I'm a little heavier nice. now, so it's harder. You right. Know? Oh, I'm way um, heavier now. <laughs> when I was younger, I skated a lot of like street skating, stuff like that. Stair okay. sets. Hell um, yeah. Ledges, stuff like that. But now that I'm old and fragile, uh, I'll do a lot of like just ramp, like mini ramp or or small bowls, like nothing too nice. crazy. Dude, um, I always wanted to skate a bowl. I never got a chance to, man. Oh, oh, shit, it's like so much fun. It is real fun, especially if you, find, if you find like a nice mellow one that's not like super. Like when I was younger, I used there's a skate park, uh, indoor skate park that's not too far from here. Nice. And, uh, they have a huge, huge bowl. I used to skate that, and it was like it had like oververt on it. Ooh, I couldn't imagine yeah, that doing is... that now. Yeah, if I fell, I would never get back up. Dude, I was driving through my neighborhood, and like I'm new out here, and, and it's like I, I say neighborhood. It's more like a couple of spread out communities. And uh, I was going to the post office and it gave me like two different options to go left or go straight. And I was like, oh, I've already I've been driving this direction like since I moved out here. Let me hit left and just kind of see what's over here. Because I basically I had to go that direction at one point. So I, I took this early left turn and I'm cruising through like the back. I don't know. It's like this weird park thing. And then all of a sudden I turn right and I'm looking at a skate park. And I was like, what the fuck? And so I pulled over and got out and I'm standing there looking around and the sheriff pulls up and I said, hey. He's looking at me all funny, and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm new to this neighborhood. I was like, is this just, like, open and available to people to use? And he's like, as long as it's daylight, you can do whatever you want. He's like, but, uh, you know, it's got signs and shit, so if you get hurt, there's no suing anybody. But, yeah, go have fun. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. So I went home and got my skateboard, and I, and I hadn't skated on, like, a, you know, a bank ramp or anything in, dude, 15 years. I was so scared, but I did it anyways. And got just cruising around, not doing any kind of tricks or anything. But it's so fun, man! It's exhilarating. Yeah, it, it is. It's a good workout too. Hell yeah! Oh, dude, it really. I was dripping sweat twenty minutes in, man. And I was yeah. listening. I took a little cordless speaker with you and just jam out and just cruise around for a little bit. It's it's fucking nice, man. It's nice. Uh, hell yeah, dude. Man, what what is the when when you guys just released that Street Power record, didn't you? That was like a, like recent Sep recent September first. Okay, yeah. So it was like two months ago, right? Yeah. Man, that record is really good. Did, is that when Thank the you. digital album or the physical release of it dropped? That's both? when the the digital album came out. Digital album. So the physical yeah, yeah. is Actually, that brand new. The physical, uh, they just shipped yesterday, or yeah, they just shipped Hell yesterday. Yeah. So, dude, that's so badass, you, if, man. You, if you just ordered it, it'll probably ship tomorrow. Nice. I'm not in no hurry, man. It's awesome. I just want to get it, yeah. throw it on, and listen to it a few times. I'll be doing a full record review for it too, man. Just to see, just throw it out there, man. I love, I love cool. doing this stuff, dude. This is the I have like the best life, bro. I'm so happy. Some people get mad because I talk too much on the videos. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. It's like a, it's not like a, uh, what's the word? Uh, an, a, a, an interview has got that. What's the word I'm looking for here? It's like a, uh, it's more like a hangout, man. I'm just hanging out, yeah. getting to know people because. I go to shows, so I expect to run into you guys again at some point. It'd just be cool to say what's up. Like, I don't know. So Street Power is coming to play Texas. We're doing a couple of days in Texas in February. Fuck yeah, dude. Do you know, uh, let's see. 
Do you know if you could tell me, are you playing Houston by any chance or Austin? I think we're playing both Houston and Austin. Uh, so Dude, the information shit, yeah. is on my phone, which is what I'm using to talk yeah, to Yeah, no you. worries. I'll, I'll, uh, uh, are you going to make posts about it anytime soon? Uh, yeah, the, it's not. It, they haven't. The flyers haven't been put out yet, but hold on. Okay. I actually might have it right here. Cool. I'd love to know what day is because I got a couple things going on in February, but unless it's something super important, I'm definitely going to be at that show. So February uh, February 2nd is in Austin at a okay. place called 13th Floor. And then uh, February 3rd is McAllen, Texas at a place called The Gremlin. And then February 4th is in Houston at 1810. Hell yeah. Oh, dude. 1810 Ogemon? Yeah. Yo. Okay, so that's a Sunday. And my record store is only open on Saturday and Sunday. It's just a two day a week thing. It's a weekend, you know, weekend thing, obviously. And uh, that Ojemon place is like ten minutes from my record shop, dude. So I'm definitely, definitely going to be at that. Come hang out. Hell yeah, dude. That's going to be awesome. I'm typing it in the calendar right now, dude. That's awesome. I can't wait to see y'all play. Do you know? Are you touring like with another band? Or are you doing some like some local shit or what? Yeah. So Ryan from uh, Liberty and Justice, he has that's my dog. Band. Yeah, I love him, man. He's the man. Uh, the Burden. The Burden. Okay. Yeah, and I think there's a third band that they just added to it. Uh, cool. I didn't that I didn't realize was doing it, which is cool with me. But um, I don't know the name. It's on my phone, which I can't. Find yeah. Because I'm talking to you on it. But. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Yeah. Yeah, the burden is great, man. And Ryan, I've known Ryan for twenty years, man. That's that's one of my very good friends, dude. I uh, do you oh, know you... his? Go ahead. No, I was gonna say when CMI came out to Texas, man, he was he was all... him and Gabe. Do you know Gabe too? Gabe Wells. Yeah. Yes, dude. I've known that guy since high school. That's my dog, bro. Yeah, yeah. Dude. That's that's my so... that's dude. I fucking love Gabe, I, dude. I... I've been begging him to do a podcast with me, bro. He's just always doing something, oh, like, he's, man. He's he should do it. So. I, I first met Gabe when I was like 15. When uh, oh Pride for Kills. real, <laughs> yeah, Pride Kills came up to Brockton, uh, Brockton, Massachusetts to play some show to play a show. So I met him. I met him then, and then when CMI got to Houston, okay, they're like, oh yeah, we're we're staying at this dude's house, and we get there, and I'm like, man, I know this guy, <laughs> and I'm like. Dude, this is like 11 o'clock at night. We show up at Gabe's house. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, "Are you? were you in Pride Kills? And he lifts up his sleeve and shows me the Pride Kills tattoo. And I was like, man, I'm about to blow your mind. I'm like, I met you when I was like 15, right? And and I met him again because I, I used to come to Texas, San Antonio, because uh, I, I dated a girl from there a long time ago. And I, I went to San Antonio, and they used to have this thing. I think it was called Underground Fest. And I went to the sh- a show there, and uh, it was like Hoods and Terror and Death Threat. And, uh, Let's go. Pride Kills and Will to Live were both playing. Let's go. And I was I was friends with all those dudes in the other other bands. So, I, like, I'm hanging out with all them. I was younger, of course. But, uh, yeah, so I met him then, too. And then, like, I'm like, this is the guy's house that we're staying at? That's crazy. Like, Dude, that is awesome. It's such small a small world. world. So really small, is. dude. Because Gabe's like one of my very good friends, dude. I know Rob really well. Like, I got a GAC tattoo in my throat when I was like, oh hell yeah, yeah, dude. I, dude, I don't know. I've had that tattoo twenty years or more now. Like, it's funny people see it, and every now and then someone go, oh, I know what that is. I'm like, oh yeah, who are you, who are you friends with? But it's just something to get to know people, yeah. man. Like, it ain't no tough guy shit at this point in my life. I'm fucking too fat and old for that. But uh, yeah, dude. As a matter of fact, uh. I knew Rob Lind a little bit, right? Like just just from like him being in bands and touring and stuff, and just me constantly being at shows, right? And so I run into him on my twenty first birthday in Austin. He's playing with Ramallah, and they're playing with the Unseen. And so he gets me a few drinks. Like he's like, "Ah, oh, I know you, man. You're friends with with Gabe." He's like, "You're friends with Gabe," and I'm like, "Yeah, what's up?" Gabe fucking knows everybody, man. And so yeah. I, he gets me some drinks, and then like fast forward a couple of years, and um. I'm living with Gabe at this point. And uh, me and Gabe had jobs waiting tables at like restaurants, but not the same place, but we'd have to get up in the morning and like drive kind of far. And so blood for blood played Houston. And I said, Hey man, I- I'm, I'm happy to be at the show, dude, but I, I got to get going, man. As soon as they were done playing, I was like, I got to go home, bro. I got to go to bed. Gabe's like, all right, whatever. And so he's like, I'm going to say, hang out. I was like, all right, whatever. No big deal, dude. So I go home, 
I pass out on the couch. Dude, at like three in the morning, I'm sleeping. I'm just like dead ass out, dude. All of a sudden, fucking water starts hitting me in the face. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? And I, 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 I sat up and I saw Gabe with no shirt on. And so I first thought he was peeing on me, dude. But it was, it was, it was fucking Rob. He was pouring beer in my head. He was like, hey, Randy, Randy, get up, bro. And he was like, dude, come hang out. And I was like, oh my God, dude, I was so tired. And at one point, Gabe was like, we lived in a cul-de-sac, oddly enough. And uh, the houses were so close together that you could jump from roof to roof. And Gabe was like jumping with nothing on but work boots, like from from roof. I don't know, bro. <laughs> Dude, yeah, he's I, a wild, had... he's a wild man. He's he's Dude, awesome. I... I can't wait to come, when we go to Houston. I can't. That's like the thing I'm looking forward to most is seeing Wells, Gabe. Too. Yeah, Dude, yeah, yeah, Gabe Wells, man. Shout out to Gabe Wells, bro. Shout, Shout out, out to, to Gabe, to number Rob one host, man. Number one host. He put CMI up for two different nights, I think, or two. Yeah, two different nights. Him and his wife, unbelievable people. Oh, they're amazing, like, dude. Gabe's amazing, yeah. man. Dude. So before I let you go, the, how I met Gabe in high school, I was this little ratty street punk kid, skateboarder, right? And uh, I was really skinny. I'm only five foot eight. And so I was running down the hallway and these like jock dudes started uh, hassling me and started kicking my ass. And so we're fighting and shit, right? And Gabe is like, I think a year or two older than me. And he was walking down the hallway and he was the kind of guy who was always friends with everybody. So yeah. even though he was like a punk rocker, he was still friends with like the cool guys. And he was he was a like a greaser back then, bro. He was to wear like a white tucked in t-shirt with the buddy holly glasses and a fucking pompadour, bro. And so he comes walking around the corner and he was on the water polo team, bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> and uh he basically is like, Hey, I know that kid. And so he stops me from getting the shit beat out of me. And that's how we became friends. Because I was just to pal around with him after that and like do favors for him and shit. This, this is my homie, dude. After that, I was like, Oh, thank God this guy walked down the hall. But uh, yeah, dude, Gabe was awesome, man. I fucking love that guy. When I brought up that, I was like, dude, I met you in Brockton when I was fifteen. Up, and he was like, he's like, oh, I think we played a show with Colin of Arabia. Colin's one of my best friends. So I, oh, I took dope. a pic- I took a picture, and I texted it to Colin. And Colin's like, he's like, oh, he's like, ask him if he remembers the 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 show in Brockton. And I was like, yeah, he was just talking about. There's some things I can't say on here, but yeah, <laughs> it was it, it was pretty funny. Dude, like, it's such awesome. a small world, man. Crazy. It is. Well, this is what I love about it. Cause like, I don't even really know you, but I feel like we're friends. Like, it's like I, you know so many yeah. people that I know. We are, friends. and I've never even traveled, bro. <laughs> like, just think about that. I know I've never I, done I, any of that shit. I saw you saying that when you were talking to Adam. You so you've like never left Texas. I just went to Las Vegas. It's my first time yeah, leaving yeah, the state. That. Yeah, bro. Like, I flew for the first time, and it was fucking terrifying, bro. I was just like, I'm scared of heights and shit. So like. I was, dude, it was so scary. I got over it, but like, yeah, man, it was, it was, I went to the punk rock museum. I got to hold Tim Armstrong's guitar. I got to hang out with Fat Mike a little bit. Uh, it was like a little punk rock kid's dream, dude. It was awesome, man. Uh, well, you ever want yeah. to come over to Massachusetts, right? And oh, you're more, more than welcome. Bring your kids, bring your wife. You guys are more than welcome to come hang out. Oh, man, that's amazing, dude. Yeah, I, I definitely want to do like some East Coast cities like specifically like boston chicago new york just to see like the buildings and stuff it's so different oh, Chica- than houston chicago chicago's midwest that's oh that's yeah i guess plan. it is huh i got i got like homies that like their families there and for some reason they always i always associate it with like east coast even though i know it's not yeah yeah it's you would like for east coast you'd want to visit like boston like philly uh, maybe it's philly east coast new york philly's cool but like Philly's great, but uh, I don't know if that's like you want to bring your like wife and kids to Philly. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, that's true. I've heard enough stories about Philadelphia to know that's probably not a good idea. But uh, uh, but like most of these cities, like Philly's a five hour ride, New oh, York's wow. a three and a half hour ride. So like I can just jump in my car and be that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's so for crazy. you in, for you in Texas, that's like you going to the grocery store is like five Bro, hours away. <laughs> legit, dude. Just my job is like fifty miles from here not 50 it's like 40 but like that's like to some people that's like that's like a whole different state i'm like no dude it's like houston's crazy man like as an example to go to most most shows driving at like eight o'clock at night when there's no traffic out there it's going to take me about 70 minutes to get to a show and so like the the ojamon show where y'all are playing in february that's why i'm so stoked it's 45 minutes from my house not like an hour and a half so i'm i'm super pumped for that because i like to be Houston is massive. So big, bro. I can't believe how big it is. We flew into when we 
played there, when CMI played there, we flew into one airport, right? Um, yeah. Well, I forget. I forget the name of it. Uh, Probably Hobby, I would think. What is it? Hobby. I think we flew into Hobby, and the other airport is where we had the car rental from by accident. Oh, so we had shit. the Uber from Hobby all the way to the other airport to get the rental van. Oh damn! Yeah, we didn't That's realize there were ass. two different two different airports like what we booked the flights and then we rented the vehicle yeah we just you know typed in houston for the airport that shit's crazy man i think back in the day we used to have three big ass airports we had bush intercontinental we had hobby it houston's so spread out this is why i want to go travel to the east coast and just kind of see the cities because most of them are built up because they're smaller you know what i'm saying houston's yeah. just it's just built out like we have like Five or six suburbs that are like legitimate cities. It's it's crazy, but they're still considered Houston. Yeah. Like it's it's the biggest fucking place in the country, dude. It's it's so it's so weird. I don't I don't know how the West Coast is. It's probably closer to the how Texas is. I from like stuff that I've heard, but yeah, I would love to visit. So in Boston, what what kind of shit that's like historical is in Boston? I I, would, I should know this stuff. Oh, every, from the, everything, man. Everything. Yeah. We got, I have like 35 minutes from here. There's Plymouth, which is like the first town in the United States. Oh, you've got cool. Ply Plymouth Rock, where the like that's where the pilgrims the, landed. That's okay. That's where they landed. That's right. <laughs> and then you got they actually have a like a replica of the Mayflower there. Um, oh damn! They've, they've got uh, you know, if you go to Boston, there's all the like Paul Revere's grave. There's like. Oh, so much shit. There's so much stuff. That's I didn't ever thought about seeing stuff like that. Like that's crazy, man. Like as the older I get, the more I get interested in just kind of like like my name's Patty, my my last name. So my my whole family's Irish. Like my mom's maiden name was Flanagan. So like we're whole our whole family's Irish, man. And so like Boston, uh all all the East Coast cities and Actually, even going over to like two two minutes from me. I got uh, a Revolutionary War fort that's built right on the water. It's called Fort Phoenix. Oh, damn. And then, and then 15 minutes away, there's another one called Fort Tabor. And that one you can actually go inside of, and, it, and you can go underground in the tunnels and everything. Holy shit. It, it's Dude, all graffitied up. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. But, like, there's, there's still uh, cannons that they have there at Fort Phoenix that were the, an original <sighs> cannon from, like, the – like from the 1700s that's incredible man like yeah. they don't they don't talk about this stuff enough now we're so uh i guess engrossed with like modern technology modern life you don't really think about the past as much as maybe we should we could learn a lot from it obviously right i mean we have history classes for a reason you don't learn from your triumphs as much as you do from your mistakes and things but uh i'd love to just be up there and kind of see stuff I'm not super educated. Like I'm a pretty intelligent guy, but I didn't go to school and I didn't do something. My wife did. She's super bright. My wife's amazing. Yeah. But uh, but like, I would like to just go look at that stuff. And I got my kiddo is really really smart. He likes to learn shit too. So that's yeah, there's, awesome, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of cool stuff like all around this state. That's badass. Is there anywhere that you still want to go with CMI? Y'all haven't gone, or hell, either band really uh, that you want to go uh and go play a city, any kind of cities or, or countries that you want to go visit and play Every, everywhere hell yeah that's obviously right that's a great answer J too because japan uh south i was america. wondering if you're gonna say japan bro yeah japan south america australia anywhere southeast asia like canada like I w let's take it everywhere Dude, I, I like that you're so excited about it um adam gets so jazzed talking to him i've you know i've only spoken to him a few times but like doing the videos with him he gets so pumped up talking about it it makes me all excited and shit like i live vicariously through the bands that i listen to so it's really nice to just watch you guys succeed man uh hell yeah dude have you listened to anything from uh from uh i'm sure you have the the stuff that's coming out of france right now bro all the like dark wave oi shit is fucking crazy yeah. dude it's so good man so many I'm, bands coming out I, of that part of the world i haven't dived into it like at like adam i think it showed me some stuff um, okay and we we played with like uh squillette and um mm. there's a uh, what's there's another band from france that i recently listened to now i can't um is it cron c-r-a-n no i didn't i haven't i've heard of them i haven't listened to them yet there's, but they're uh, like top notch i forget the name there's a z in the name and i can't remember it now it's like yeah they got some weird ass names over there man that's <laughs> 
But there's so but much it, good music out right now. The the show that we played in Paris was incredible. Hell yeah. One of my dude, favorite shows cool. of the European tour for sure. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. And everybody there was like part of some band. Dude, so, that's what Adam was saying. He's like, dude, yeah. everybody I talked to was in a band I like. I was like, that's awesome. That's incredible. Yeah, they, a lot of them were like there were like girls there that were just like full on girl boy bands. It yes. was really cool. Yeah. That sounds awesome. I like female vocals a lot, man. I'm not I'm not too picky. I'll take it. I don't care as long as the music's good. Uh I actually kind of prefer like lady vocals in punk music because I, I like it. Like there's a certain aspect of it that I really enjoy. Like the distillers. I used to fucking love that band. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. You listen to any ska or reggae shit or no? Uh not too much. The closest I really got to ska was like obviously Operation Ivy. Everybody loves Fuck, that yeah. record. Um, but Leftover Crack and Choking Victim. Love those two bands for sure, for sure, absolutely. Uh, no Dude, cash had... too. Who? No cash. I don't they know. They were that. like, in, they were like in the same vein. They were like crust punk ska bands. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. yeah, that stuff's good shit, man. Uh, I was talking to a customer at my shop. I guess what's today? Sunday. Today's Monday, right? I think uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and they were like, uh, he was flipping through records, and and it was clear that he was more into like metal stuff, and uh. He's like, hey, you got a lot of punk rock over here. And I was like, yeah. And then he goes, my friend's looking for Operation Ivy. Do you have it? And I was like, I do. And he goes, uh, he's flipping through. He goes, oh, here it is. And he goes, which is their best record? And I was like, well, it'd have to be that one. And he was like, oh, what do you mean? I was like, they've only got one. And it blew his mind. I don't know what his friend had told him, but I was like, yeah. He's like, they seem to be pretty impactful. And I was like, that's, yeah, you got it. You nailed it, dude. I was like, for a band that has one album, very, I mean, there's, you know, there's quite a few bands that, that, did one album that are impactful but man operation ivy is a big one for our our group oh, of, people. of course of course well i got two more questions i'll let you get out of here these ones are silly questions i do for fun but uh the two questions are this if you could tour right now with any band period doesn't matter where they come from whatever who would you tour with uh and, and why any band any band Ooh, uh that's tough. Um, if I could tour with, you know what? If I could tour with any band right now, like tour the world, uh, some the dudes in Colin of Arabia are like some of my best friends, especially Colin. I would, and we're we're doing a small run with Street Power with them. I would I would love to do a full, you know, like European tour or U.S. tour with them or anywhere really. Dude. That was a I, badass I, answer. I like that, dude. Yeah, you know, like I don't have to go with some crazy band or some band that like used to exist that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I, I think I would just have the most fun with with our friends, you know. Yeah, dude, that's a really great answer. I always think I always kind of go to my favorite bands, but like having my buds along is actually probably better. They're your friends, right? Uh, didn't they just release a new song? Or am I tripping? They released a new EP. EP, okay. Yeah, yeah it's really I used good. to listen to them way back though. in the day. I need to go back and listen to all that, man. I used to jam them a lot. Uh, do you know that, that there's a song on that record? It's the best COA song I think probably ever. My favorite COA song is 50 Bag of Hate, but I think this one might even top that. It's called Please Don't Tell the Boys. So if you if you go listen to it when we get off this call, I absolutely will. Check check that song out first. Hell yeah. Do you know the uh, origin of that band name? I always found it like kind of odd to be honest. So I honestly I forget. I should know because I've known this. I've known this dude since I was like thirteen years old. I've always been a fan of COA. Uh I believe because of the movie Lawrence of Arabia, but like he just came back from either I think Iraq or Afghanistan because he was in the army as well. Okay. And so they called him Colin of Arabia. Dude, that's awesome. I was just curious. Or, I, or honestly someone gave him that, that nickname, be... and or it said that should be your band name. Dude, that's that's that actually makes more sense. I was I was just always I listened to them quite a bit back in the day, and I and I always thought there had to be some kind of either really simple reason, like you gave me, or something just insane as to why they called their band that. And I was like, I was like, just curious, man. I, I'm I don't know, inquisitive, I guess. Uh, last question, which is this is a real stupid one, but I love this question. If you were on a tour and you got attacked. By like a group of, I don't know, five to eight ninjas, right? And you're just like, oh shit, ninjas are everywhere all of a sudden. 
Who do you want to be with you when you're in that situation? What other band do you want to be on tour with you? Is it still Colin of Arabia? Or do you want some other dudes to be with you when you're on that tour in that situation? Uh, well, yeah, for sure. Colin, <laughs> for sure, Colin of Arabia too. But uh, what band? What band would I want? I like it would have to be a bunch of crazy, crazy fuckers. I don't know. Uh, honestly, I think just like CMI would be fine, dude. <laughs> yeah. I think I think Adam We're, said something like anybody from FSU, and I was like, "Good answer, like <laughs> fucking good answer." That's awesome, dude. Yeah, really, Chris, really. Uh, any of our friends' bands for sure. Fuck yeah, man, <laughs> dude. I could sit here and chit chat with you for hours. I know you don't have time for that shit, but it has been an absolute pleasure, man. I sincerely appreciate your time. Uh, I'm gonna be checking out Street Power stuff. Well, I mean, I've already checked it out and purchased the record, but I'm gonna be doing a full on review of it. Track by track, I'll be hanging out with you guys when you get down here in February for sure. Awesome. And I'll try to bring some friends tag along. Uh, dude, thank you so much. Is there anybody you want to shout out? Anybody you want to give some shine to in a band you want somebody to go listen to or anything like that before we go? Yeah, shout out uh, The World, Haywire, Fairy Dreams, Jackal. Um, I know I'm forgetting people and they're going to be mad at me for it. But oh, Colin of Arabia, uh, Bear, I think I already said Barry Dreams. Every Boston hardcore band, go listen Hell to all yeah. of them. Um, Instigate, Peace Test. Ooh. Wait, you Every, said Peace Test? Peace Test from Rhode Island. Yeah, yeah. I thought you said Piss Test at first, and I was like, dude, no, that that's Gabe's band. <laughs> yeah, bro. So I got like a sticker on my shit over there. Yeah, dude, that band was, dude. He gave right, me dude. a Piss Test shirt, and I brought it dude. home, and I think, I think my wife hid it somewhere. And she was like, I dude. hate this shirt. <laughs> dude, man, I, I gave them, uh, so I screen print. And I and I was like, hey, y'all want me to do some shirts for you? And he's like, Yeah, come up with a design. And I sent him a design and he was like, nah, bro, I, I don't want I like I'm not I'm not cool with that. Uh it was something about the the people that band with him that, that they weren't really wanting to be canceled or something, because it was like a it just said piss test on the like real big, and then underneath they had like a chick with like a ball gag in her mouth. And he was just like <laughs> not feeling it, bro. I was like, come on, bro. Like, let's let's be retarded, man. Let's do some ignorant shit, man. But Anyways, dude, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you uh, for having me, man. Absolutely, man. I'll keep in touch. And whenever you have new projects out or any new music, uh, if you have the time, I'd love to talk with you. Yeah, absolutely. I play in a third band, too. It's an old no band. No shit. Do you really? Yeah, Back of the Neck. Oh, fuck, dude. Hold on. Let me write that down. Back yeah. of the Neck? Yeah, that, that band, I was a, I grew up listening to that band and then ended up joining it a few years ago. When they like, Yo, that's We, we awesome. do like one, sh one show a year, but I play in that What band kind of music well. is it? That's just like straight up hardcore stuff. Okay. What do you well, play in that band? Guitar. Guitar? Yeah. Awesome, dude. I'll check I'll check that out too, man. Is anything is it all older material or do you have some more modern uh, current current is the right word? No, it's, out? Most of it's older. We we released like one song like two years ago and uh we were gonna do an EP, but the, everybody in that band is like got families and careers and it's like really tough to yeah yeah we have a bunch of stuff recorded we just never released it yet shit you yeah. ever need help with that let me know man i do tapes i'm about to get into vinyl so it's yeah, open man. offer but um shit dude if you ever need anything from me that i can do to help or anything don't hesitate to reach out otherwise i'll talk to you at some point soon all right man it was good talking with you hell yeah chris have a great night man you too all right peace bro